Hello, my name is Rick Houston, and welcome to the Scene Vault Podcast, your source for all things NASCAR history. Presented by Las Vegas Motor Speedway, America's racing showplace. All right, me and your mom's going to go eat. We'll talk to you later. I'm sort of thinking, well, this, you know they're eating somewhere good. You know they're doing <laughs> something. And I'm over here for the third time putting milk and macaroni and cheese in the show. No, wait a second. When you would get out of the car and you'd gripe about your car, I was right there eating it up and printing it in Winston <laughs> Cup scene. So I helped you get to Dill Renzi. You Where's did? my cut? Yeah, well, well... I want my yeah, cut. Yeah, we'll try to send you a piece of that. So during the parade laps, I would pop that thing loose, unhook it from the dash, and put it underneath there, and pull it down, and I could see my roof do this. And we would fly... The day NASCAR and all of us associated in any way with NASCAR forget its past, that's the day we don't have any future. Now, what was your reaction to when he would do stuff like that? Was it aggravating for you? Was it frustrating? Or did you know that he was trying to teach you something? No, I didn't know at the time. Because like when I was running late models or whatever, and I couldn't buy a set of tires because I didn't have the money. Yeah. You know, his whole thing was, well, just suffer through it. You know, ride part of the race. And I'm sort of thinking, just buy a set of tires. I said, you, and I will tell him, I'm like, I've just seen you go to the bank and get all this money, put it in your pocket or whatever. And he's like, that, that's my money. That's my money. <laughs> you know, yeah. and, you know, yeah. I would go, we would go, because he was real big into like super birds and stuff like yeah. that, super bees. And he would go buy one. I mean, it'd be like $40,000, $50,000, just buy one at, right out and go home like just be sitting back ah, and i'm sitting over thinking so can we buy a set of tires this week no i ain't got no money <laughs> hey change that pull that rent out of that super bird we just bought and do i mean it was yeah. yeah but now i know yeah now i know and don't get me wrong i mean there was many nights when he when, when i was 18 hey look it, it, i had bologna and macaroni and cheese and i'd go to the store and buy three or four uh the little 16 ounce cokes or dr peppers or whatever what i ate all week and he didn't ask me what i was eating he said are, are you eating i'm like oh yeah i got a and oh yeah i got stuff in the fridge right good all right me and your mom's gonna go eat we'll talk to you later i'm sort of thinking Man, this, you know they're eating somewhere good you know they're doing <laughs> something and i'm over here for the third time putting milk and macaroni and cheese and stuff like you know you, trying to <laughs> you had money for milk with the mac i made my macaroni and cheese with water dude and it was, <laughs> you remember the boxes or whatever oh, yeah, yeah, yeah 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 i mean it was that way ramen noodles but baby. he did <laughs> but it, when i came home from there when i started writing but it was weird because he'd have his moments i would come home he'd be he would call me where you at i'd be like i'm leaving lebanon and coming back to he's are you going home i'm like yeah what do you need or you need to go home first but then he would go, and I would open up the door, and there was tons of groceries. So, you know, he had his moments, but not when we, not, that's why I said earlier, I get irritated when people say, well, you had everything. Bullshit. I, no, I did not. <laughs> I didn't. And I tell people now, I said, that's why I eat like I, do I not eat crazy, I like fast? Because it was like, when I, I all through racing, all through because when you're on TV or whatever, they want slim, whatever. They always tell you what to eat, what you can't eat, what you can't do, this and that. And then between growing up, like I did on the road, it was always... So now I'm like, hmm, give me one of those, one of those, one of those. She's like, why are you eating that? I'm like, I don't. I'm not going to eat it all. I'm just going to take a bite of that, take a bite of that, take a bite of that. You know, because... Yeah. I, I still kind of... I don't feel like I'm there, but it's just kind of like I remember those days. Yeah. You know? That's a pretty good transition because you talked about going from those days. How did you get hooked up with the Renzies? I was... Uh, because the Renzies were pretty much the highlight. I yeah, mean, that, they were, that was a good deal for you. Yeah, they were, uh, they were... We were at Atlanta the week before. Yeah, we were at Atlanta the week before. And somebody told me the 25 car, they're looking to replace uh, Randy uh, to Tozma. Right, that was the name. I they think, was looking to yeah, replace Randy him. Tol yeah, yeah, Randy Tosma. Yeah. yeah, they was looking to replace him, and I need to go talk to Ronnie Russell. Ronnie Russell was at Petty's when my dad was there. Right. Okay. Yeah. So I knew I could walk right up, kind of like with you. If I seen you, I could yeah. walk right up, talk to yeah. you. You know. Yeah. So I walked up to him. I was like, "Hey, y'all doing something different over here?" And he was like, "Maybe." Why? He's like, "He's like, there's going to be some huge changes. There's going to be. We're going to Ford. We're buying 
Ryan Newman's old Ford stuff or whatever. I'm like, no kidding. I was like, who's in the motors? He's like, uh, Yates. I was like, dude, what do I need to do? He's like, can you get out of that deal you're in? I'm like, not yet, but I will. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> he's yeah. like, no, I don't want to go through all the lawsuits and stuff. I was like, no, nope, I'll take care of it. So all I did is went back to the 26 car and started speaking my mind. So they didn't like that. They were like, you know what? I just think we're going to do something different. I'm like, all right, that'd work. Can you go ahead and release me now? And I'll just go ahead and run this. <laughs> and my mom and everybody was like, I don't know if I'd have done that. I'm like, it worked. All I, did, I didn't speak a lie. I didn't go sit there and say, well, he's awful. I just went in there like, here's what y'all need to do. You need to do this. You need to do that because they're doing this. They're doing that. I'm up here doing this. I do this. I do that. Y'all do this. He doesn't do this. And they were like, this. I mean, every week. On the radio, because typically I wasn't that guy. I would be like, have a bad pit stop. Come on, guys. You're making me, you know, get it together. I'm trying for you here. You know, you're trying to be that coach. And then, like, if they'd have, I mean, it was like they would have a bad pit stop. I'm like, really? I mean, it would just be a complete flip. You went all Kevin. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> sorry, listeners. <laughs> you went all Kevin Harvick on their hind end. Well, I mean, it was like it was an opportunity <laughs> that I knew because I had two more years with them. So I was like, all I'm going to do is speak my mind. If it doesn't work, it does, but maybe it will fix what I got. So I couldn't lose either way. Either they was going to fire me or they would try to fix it because they didn't want to hear me complaining the whole time. But it worked out because they said, we're just going to do something different next year. I was like, can you go ahead and release me now? <laughs> and they were like, why now? Never mind. Uh, yeah, I was like, I just, I, you know, it just kind of gives me freedom. And then they held off because they started hearing rumors. And yeah, I was like... Yeah. So I have to turn it up the following week. And it was like, <laughs> I mean, it was, if that car didn't do exactly what I wanted, I'd get out and throw shit. I'm like, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, y'all better fix it. Or I'm telling you, I mean, it was, so I could not lose. And my dad seen in my theory, cause he was like, I just don't want you to be known as that guy in the drive in the garage area. That's like, golly, he's hard to work with. And I'm like, I'm speaking the truth. No, wait a second. When you would get out of the car and you'd gripe about your car, I was right there eating it up and printing it and what's the cup say. So I helped you get to Dale Renzi. You, you Where's did. my cut? Yeah, well, well I want my yeah, cut. Yeah, we'll try to send you a piece of that. We'll, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think my daughter already probably spent it. So <laughs> what it is, yeah. Well, how how long did that take? How long did that plan take from the conversation with Ronnie to seven weeks? Really? Yeah, they were done with me in seven weeks. <laughs> Yeah, they were. They were like, "We we can put so and so in that car. Do it. I don't blame you. He's no, a great guy. Please don't. Yeah, please don't. No, no, no. I was past Did you the shed a little. Yeah, no. Mr. Sprinkles, I, I was, Mr. Tinkles, yeah, no uh, tear there. I was when they told me that because I heard I was already replaced. Yeah. Um, and then they started, and and I'm gonna tell you, and I, I and I'm always a I'm always the type of guy that looks at things and says. I don't know if I should tamper with that because that kind of worked out like it was supposed to. Uh, what was the kid? He um, Blaze Alexander. Yeah. yeah, that was going to be their pick. Yeah, we they went to Nazareth, and of course, uh, I don't know, I don't know why I wasn't there. I was doing something with a cup car or something. I was testing something. My dad basically he knew what I was doing, so he was like, "Well, you're going to miss the first day of." What do you feel about missing the first day of practice at Nazareth? to go test Andy Petrie's car at Kentucky with me all day. And I'm like, heck yeah. You know, cause I'm sort of thinking, hey, it's practice day. Now, did you check, did you run this plan by your dad first or was this easier to ask? No, for because, yeah, because he came to me, he gets, he was looking, he's like, what the hell are you doing? He's, I hear you all over the place hammering these people. I mean, what are you doing? He's Dr. Pepper. I'm like, I don't, I don't care. I said, here's my plan. He's like, Bobby, that's awful deadly. Cause if it doesn't work, you know, so, Blaze Alexander was going to be their pick because now they went to Nazareth and they were concerned because he got out of the car. And I remember one of the guys that came with me to Renzi's, he was there, he was a tire guy, and he was like, that's their pick. He's, I think you're good. He said, but you better get me out of here. And I was like, I got you. So he was telling me, and I texted him, I was like, how, how are y'all? He's like, man, we're second off. He said, this ain't good. So I was like, okay. Well, they went to Charlotte. They went to Charlotte, and I, he, he got killed that night. Uh, uh, yeah, he got killed that night, and it was an ARCA car. Yeah. And we were pitting for him. We were pitting, using our pit crew. Really? Yeah, and our guys were the very first ones over there to him. So after that situation, I went home, and I was like, I'm stuck. 
Yeah. As I know this is awful timing. Yeah. And I shouldn't be saying this. I said, but I'm stuck because they're not going to have nobody to replace me because they love. I mean, he was perfect. Yeah. He was a perfect looking kid. He was, I mean, he's aggressive. You know, I mean, he, he had everything going on. And then on his accident after he passed away and I was like, I'm stuck. And then Kevin Grubb was running around, searching, yeah. looking. Yeah. And of course I was, you know, they were asking me, what do you think about Kevin? We're talking about doing the second, which I knew they were doing the second. They could barely afford for the first one. Yeah. So I knew what they were doing. They was asking me because I was with them. I was like, Kevin? Oh, oh yeah, he's if I was on the team, get that Rick would be Houston, he'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> if you so beat him in the car. It all played out. Yeah, it all played out. And finally, Ronnie hit me up. He said, we're ready to make a decision. Are you good? Yeah. And I showed him my release where they released me, and he was like, let's do it. So, you know, but it was it was, it was was a chore. It was, you know, it, was, it was hard work, but it worked out. You know, it could have been worse. 2002, New Hampshire, you mm-hmm. started second, and you finished first. Mm-hmm. Tell me about that weekend. That was the weirdest weekend because we were the fastest in everything. We unloaded fast. We unloaded qualifying speed. We were, I mean, just deadly fast. And uh, Fred Wanky was the crew chief, and he's like, "I'm gonna," he's, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna pair the springs up in the back." I'm like, "What are you crazy?" I said, "We've won every practice that there is. We've won." He's like, "I'm telling you, the modifieds are gonna run right before us." He's, "I'm telling you, by the time this rubber wears off, we'll need that grip." And it was like, it, the only thing that took it away in my eyes was we went through tech. And I'm telling you, we went through tech, and I did do this. And we, we went through tech. And they literally tore my race car down. It was nothing but a chassis. They took every moving part off. They took our dad. They, they had our MSD boxes just cutting them in half and just looking. I was thinking, so I walked over, and I told him, I, his name was Gadget. And I told him, I was like, so y'all really think that I didn't do this and my crew didn't do this. And they said, well, it was just kind of odd because it was really, really fast. So I went in there to the, I went in there to, she was there, I went in there to the trailer and I got my driving shoes, put them back in a box, walked up NASCAR trailer, threw it up on the thing. They said, what's that? I said, that's what won the race today. And they said, open it up. He said, it's a pair of shoes. I said, yeah, the one in the right foot. That's what won the race today. I said, now when y'all are done. So I left, but I left there because I was irritated because they didn't give us no credit. And and we stumbled on something. It wasn't, I mean, but it would, like, to me, it would have been okay if Kevin Harvick would have done that. Yeah. It'd have been okay if Greg Biffle would have done that. You know, we, and, and even Ed Renzi was like, you tore my race car to pieces. That's what we was going to run next week. So that was the only downside as far as, like, they nobody respected what we did. Not that you have to. But for us, we fell on something, and it worked, you know. And it wor- it was working at Richmond because I uh, we ran out. We had a fuel pump problem. Remember, I was going to ri- ri- win Richmond the night uh, the week before. Yeah, and I was leading all the way up to that because it was the same deal, just paired up rear springs, and it was working. But then that that was my that so it was awesome. It was fun, but I mean nothing towards NASCAR. But they took the yeah. fun away. With all that aside, what did it mean to you to win that race, and what did your dad have to say about it? Oh, he was he was was he there? No. Okay. No, he was extremely extremely happy because, and it was almost like a relief. Yeah. But to me, you talking about pressure earlier. To me, it added more because now we now we know we can do it. Okay. Yeah. So, and that was always the bad thing about NASCAR and that sport. You can win the Daytona Five Hundred. And you are the man for four days. After that, nobody remembers. So it was like that following week. We went, I, don't, I don't know where we went to. I can't remember. But we went to the following week right after that. And I'm still all walking around thinking, we just won New Hampshire. People are like, yeah, get out of the way. So, uh, I mean, yeah, nobody cared. That's the hard part about the sport. That's why I always said, I always joked around, I always wanted to re- win at the time either Phoenix or Homestead. Because then I have all winner. <laughs> you know, you yeah. have all winner yeah. or win the championship because then you really have all winner because it just goes in that way. It goes as soon as the race is over, you're, you're last week's news. And I've, and I've said it a hundred times. You see stuff back when you get back a, a bad review or whatever in the news or whatever, you said this or you did this. And it was, and I learned really quick, three days, you're old news, nobody cares. And racing is the same way. So it's either, you know, you didn't have that 
you didn't have that big moment that you would think in your mind, your very first bush, when you think you're going to come home, is going to be parades and shit, helicopters <laughs> with stuff, people at your house celebrating yeah, when you yeah, get out. Yeah. Uh-uh. It was getting packed up, go to the next week. It was, uh, I mean, we brought the trophy home and I set it on the counter. Oh, yeah, yeah, they did They did go. I, I, I got off, because we flew commercial, I got off the plane, we was coming through, and I, I found my truck and I was like, somebody's messed up my truck. And my dad, because he called me Stump, and he said, congratulations, Stump. And I was like, who put that on my truck? Cause it, I, and my dad did. That's how excited he was. He come from there, found my truck at the airport. Really? Yeah, and, and uh, wrote that on there. Uh, and forever he had the trophy at, you know, and finally my mom had to steal it back and give it to me as far as, but, you know, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. I think all his years of, I know he can do it. Yeah. But then with me, the pressure was, now I got to keep doing it. Yeah. Now I got to keep, I, now I got to get better because we've showed that we can do it. Well, the next year you did do it. About halfway through the season, 2003, this character by the name of Harold Holly comes on board. How, how did that come about? He was, he actually talked to me to go to the 10 car. Nobody knows this. The 10 cup? Nest quick car. Really? Yeah, I was in the 25 with Fred okay. Wanky. Yeah, yeah. He came over to, we was at Texas. He came over to me and he was like, hey, what's your plans for next year? And I was like, well, they say I'm here, but with the Marine sponsor, they only sign one year at a time. I said, so anything can change. I said, I could be here today and gone by October. Yeah. He was like, come talk to me. So I went and talked to him and he was trying to get me in the 10 car, but they didn't know what they were going to do with the 10 car. because They didn't know if Nesquik was coming back. So it was really up and down. Right. And finally, uh, I think we went somewhere. Fred, I, I, we went somewhere and Fred did something. I, I mean, it was like complete opposite. And everybody was like, what are we doing? And we ran like, I mean, awful, awful. So I knew, I was like, okay, there's a time, there's, there's going to be a co- change coming. So I went and talked to Harold. I said, if they don't do nothing over here, what are you doing? And he was like, Wow, what did you hear about over here? So we're talking back and <laughs> yeah, forth, and yeah. finally I told him, I said, go talk to Ed. And Ed, you know how Ed is. Ed's like, well, how much is it? Buy three. Because Ed Renzi was not afraid to spend money to win races, period. So he went and talked to Ed, and all of a sudden it's just how it happened. And then he got he was already kind of real big with Yates and all that stuff over there, Harold was, and um, he started buying up cars over there. and started buying up Lennon Amex cars. Because he built them over there prior. Yeah. And it was just like, I tell people this all the time. You're only as good as what you're in. I mean, uh, who's the latest, greatest? Ross Chastain. Okay. He's only as good as that one car. Yeah. You know, Dale Earnhardt. If he, if he could, if that man could really see the air and he really was, I mean, don't get me wrong. He had his system and it worked, but he would have won every He'd have won every race, every Talladega and Daytona race. He was only as good as what he had. Yeah. So not taking anything away from him, but that's what we were. You were, you was as good as what you have. So once, once all that stuff took off, it was like a light switch. It was like everything, man, <laughs> everything I was doing was working. Yeah. How I drove this, it was working. And it was like, this is even better than what it was before. Then Harold was over there like, oh, so you like the way that felt? Like, yeah, well, we can do some more. I mean, it was just getting better and better and better, and, I, you know, it just took off. You guys came together so quickly. What was it about your relationship with Harold in particular that worked so well? I, what I liked about Harold was he would tell you, here's what you need to do on the race car and why you need to do it. It wasn't like prior of – Go put this in there. You think it's going to be, go put it in there. Harold will like show you. And it was like the first couple races, I was like, this car, because he would tell me. And, he, and, and the very first time we went testing, he was like, all right, it's going to be a little free, but after three or four laps, this baby should be right. And it was like, I think one lap off. And then it was like the next run, it was like this, I mean, where's this guy been? You know, now I know. I always thought Jeff Green was good. Jeff Green was okay. Harold is what made Jeff Green good. 
And I, and I say that to anybody. You know, not, not taking anything away from Jeff. He had to drive the car. But Jeff was good. Harold made Jeff green. Just like, I mean, all we done is basically got him over there, brought some good people over there that he knew he was involved with, and then all of a sudden we win four races in a year. We're beating Kevin. In half a year. Yeah. Matt Kenseth is wondering what we're doing. Yeah. So that tells you, and, and I tell people all the time, yeah, I, w- I, w- I was already at the 25 car. We was already at Ford. We was already had all this stuff. What did we change? Yeah. I'll ask Jeff Monday when I talk to him. You know, Bobby Jr. said that you weren't that great, Harold. And, and you can tell him I said it. And You'll he, have will, to... he will agree. He might not agree to you, but he will go home and think, no, Bobby was right. You'll have, Bobby to, was right. you'll have to answer to Michelle. Yeah. Well, I, will, I, I, will I take her, it back. I take it back. <laughs> I, I will tell her, too. The reason y'all won is because of Jeff. I mean, because of Jeff drove the car, but Harold is the one that got you there. <clears throat> okay. All right. I so said, don't shoot the messenger. I'm just mm-hmm. going to ask. Um, there was a lot of talk mm-hmm. after he came on board and after y'all hit the light switch. Mm-hmm. Oh, they got traction control. I've heard that you guys had trick shocks. What did go on that year? Okay. What did make that car so good? Okay. what I Now, the traction control, I did want it. Yeah. And I did, we did do a lot of testing with it with Fred Wanky at USA Speedway. Remember Lakeland, yeah. Florida? Yeah. Yeah. We went down there and spent a ton. Brought that guy who built them, brought them down there, put him in a room. He's, really? Yes. We spent, because we knew it was out there. Greg Biffle wrecked at Nazareth and about killed him. <laughs> it was in a bush car. Per- the Purvis wreck? Uh, Greg Biffle. Yeah. yeah. Well, Greg, Greg's the one that hit uh, Jeff. It might have been. I mean, it okay, destroyed okay. cars. Okay. Yeah, I, can, yeah, I, mean, yeah. it, I mean, it like rung his bell. You know, Greg yeah. Biffle's a pretty tough old dude. And, of course, we were over there looking at his car because we're just kind of interested in how bad it tore up the race car. Well, we seen one hanging underneath the dash. <laughs> So I left there and I told I told Ed Renzi and I said, go over, I'm gonna show you come over, look at this car, or whatever. He's I don't care. And I was like, come look at this car. So I showed him and I kinda looked, I said, look underneath the dash, look what that is. Cause the, the damn green light's still blinking. <laughs> where it still had the power. I was like, tell me they're not running it. Yeah. He's like, is that what that is? I said, that's what we went and tested. Yeah. I wanted to test it. Fred was scared to death of it. Harold made a deal with me, said, I tell you what, if we can't beat them. He said, just give me one year. If we can't beat them without it, we'll start running it. He said, because I can hide it. I was like, okay, deal. I didn't need it. Now, what we did have, we had the springs, you know, because had, we had the springs where they would, we could rotate them and turn them into heavier springs, yeah. softer springs. And the shock stuff, we did have a pin in there where it would just hold them down. Okay. So, but a lot of it was, a lot of it was last year's tricks. They just, we went back to. Remember the Wickerville? Yeah. That you, yeah. <clears throat> remember all the driver safety and all that stuff they started coming out with? I think you had the headrest and you had this one piece that went and it hooked to the dash. Then it went up to the bar. So we put all that stuff in and put the cover over that to keep the driver safe, whatever. Well, in the middle of that, that was, I can't remember, it was the name of the company. We took and cut it with a razor blade, put a round metal hook that's hooked to the wicker bill up top. So during a prey lapse, I would pop that thing loose, <laughs> unhook it from the dash and put it underneath there and pull it down and I could see my roof do this. And we would fly and it never <laughs> failed. It never failed. That was the one time if I could have got to him. And we, I mean, cause you know, at the time junior was dominating the restrictor plate. And I was like, Oh, his, his ass is so kicked today because I would push him and send him yeah. and just send him. And they were even talking about on the radio, like, good God, how fast is it? And I was like, Oh, we got, and we got caught up in a dang wreck there. I think we were all running. You like, talking, you're still talking about the bush car. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. With Harold. Yeah. With Harold. So, I mean, we yeah. had our tricks, we had our, you know, but also too, I'm gonna tell you this too. We could do things that most really people really couldn't because we were the very first to step our toe in this pond. And what I mean by that is at the time the media is really helping us out because they are starting to hear some of this rumbling about, okay, this is getting kind of crazy. You've got thirteen cup guys here and they're beating all the bush guys, you're taking food away from them, blah, blah, blah. 
So I remember in a driver's meeting they were talking about it, and they said, if you need to fix fix it. Do what you need to fix it. So Harold was like, we'll fix it. We'll show up next week, Kentucky. So we'll show up <laughs> next week, and we'll fix it. He said, let's see. And Ed, Ed Renzi said, you know what? It's only a fine. What are they going to do? Wow. So then we were really pushing the issue because we, we were rolling across the scales, and the nose was like, <laughs> I was like, oh, this is going to be big. This is going to be. I even told her, I said, get the trophy, put it in the bus, and tell them to get gone. That way they ain't going to take the trophy away. <laughs> I knew they could take the money, but they ain't going to take my trophy. So that's how bad it was. And we rode, rode, rode across scales. All right. See y'all boys next week. And everybody was like, okay, we'll see you. Come back next week. It was. It was just pinned down. I mean, we just kept getting more aggressive and more aggressive and more aggressive because, and I think it helped us. When, when y'all started, when y'all started putting stuff in those papers about, Hey, it was, it's getting ridiculous because they would have 12 or 13 of those guys. Like Charlotte was awful. Daytona was awful. And, so we were ready for him. So again, I helped you get out of your Carol deal. I don't. I don't. And remember, now I'm, I now I'm right. helping you out on the on the. Okay, right, I, see. I see. I said I said media. I didn't <laughs> say you. <laughs> you went into the season finale that year at Homestead, sixth in points, but mm-hmm. you were only eighty nine points out. Mm-hmm. That was a fun year to watch from the outside mm-hmm. with that many drivers in in with a legitimate shot at the last race of the year were you honestly thinking championship going into that last race or were you just like let's just get what we can get and see what happens no because if i won the i you can ask her i told her i was going to buy a saline seven when i won the championship a what a saline it was one of the it was new there was a it was you know they got the mustang salines or whatever yeah yeah, yeah. it was a new one that came out it was a seven it was like oh it looks like some kind of crazy yeah whatever i told her i said when i that's what I'm going to buy when I win the championship. So when I when I walked into that racetrack, you were not going to beat me, because that's how that's how confident we were. You're talking about at Homestead. Yeah, at Homestead specifically. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I was already looking at them on Google. I knew. I just knew. Well, you did finish third. I yeah. Think. Yeah. And, and you finished fourth in points. <laughs> did you get the? Did you get it? No, because that was my deal that I made. Okay. You know, that was, a, that was a deal that I made. If I won the championship, I was going to buy one. And if I didn't, yeah, well, you know, it is what it is. But up to that point, he was asking if we knew if this was going to be – no, I knew I was going to win the championship. That's how good I knew my car was. And it kind of kind of give you an inside story on here how – you know, you ever hear these stories of how you need to have people behind you? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to give you kind of a story of the type of people I have behind me. So uh, – Yeah. <clears throat> It's like 10,000 degrees there, and I'm leading. And Harold said, what do you want to do, bud? You want to come and get four tires? I'm like, I come and get four tires because I said, I need something to drink. And he's like, I, you sure? Because I don't want to lose this track position. I was like, I will get it back. Just give me something to drink. Said, give me two or whatever you're going to give me and new four tires and just free it up. I will get us back. So Harold's looking at her and says, what do you think? And she's like, Hell with him. He'll be fine. Leave him out. Don't bring him in. <laughs> yeah. So I, when we get out of this car, I'm we're all spent. Drivers yeah. were, I mean, they were done. It was it was miserable hot. So Harold come over and he was like, well, and Stephanie said, make sure you stay out. And I was like, what do you mean? Well, she said, what now? And he's like, well, she told me to keep you out. He said, but it all worked out anyway because you got back to where you was. And I was like, you said for you to... She, I just didn't want you to, I said, as you're sitting on the pit box, sipping stuff and whatever, or underneath the, you know, you know, so that was the kind of group that we had. Yeah. And it was just a magical group. Yeah. It was just a good group. And it was a group that we had for about a year and a half. Then it changed. 